Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the RC Printer YouTube channel. Today we are going to do a complete build guide and show you how to build this guy, which is the Ski Ride 3D printable snowmobile. Now we do have build kits available for this 3D sled at our website, so if you're thinking about building one of these guys, check us out at rcprinter.com. You do have a few options when you decide to build a ski ride. Um, first off, we've decided to go with the polar body panels on this one. You can see this is our old one over here. And uh, this has the original body panels, which I think are more like a uh, BRP uh, body styling. Um, but we've gone with the polar here, which is more like a Polaris snowmobile. We've also opted to do our track out of TPU this time, which is a uh, flexible material. So you can see it's got a bunch of flex to it. And I'm hoping that um, that just gives us a track that has a little bit more life and we'll see if it grabs the snow a bit better as well. And then finally, one of the things uh, that I have always done here on my sleds is put these HD steering knuckles on and that's uh, just because those tend to break quite a lot and having the HD knuckle printed at 100% infill really seems to help a lot. So. Uh, those are the three things that are a little bit different on my build than the one that you may be doing. Follow along and check it out and see if these are mods you'd want to throw on yours as well. So without further ado, let's get building. Okay, first we're going to start off by building the skid, which is what the track for the snowmobile will run along. Grab your front skid arm and attach one side of your shorter shock to it with one M3 by 16 millimeter screw. Then attach the other side of the shorter shock to the front skid suspension mount with another M3 by 16 millimeter screw. Next, attach one side of the longer shock to the front skid suspension mount with another M3 by 16 millimeter screw. Then attach the other side of the longer shock to the rear skid suspension mount in the position as shown with another M3 by 16 mm screw. Now attach the skid aft arm upper to the rear suspension mount with two M3 by 10 mm screws. The bulges on the arms should be facing up and make sure the screws aren't too tight as these parts need to be able to rotate. Now attach the skid aft arm lower to the upper piece with a longer M3 by 22 millimeter screw. The bulge on the lower aft arm should point upwards and curve back, preventing the suspension from pivoting too far. Now insert a 10 by 15 by four millimeter bearing into each of the rear rollers and slide them both on the rear roller axle with the bearings facing inwards. Now grab two of your M3 by 30 millimeter screws and insert them a little ways into each skid. These will be your track tension adjustments, so we just want them in a little ways right now and we can tighten them up later once we get the track on. Now grab a few M3 by 14 mm screws and use them to connect the skids to the suspension. Make sure the flat spots on the front suspension mount face upward and key properly into the skids as shown. When connecting the lower aft arm, make sure it isn't too tight and can still rotate. When attaching the rear roller axle, the orientation of the flat section does not matter. Leave these loose so the axle can be slid along the groove in the skid to tighten the track once it is installed. Complete the other side and then attach the lower side of the front skinned arms to the skids with two M3 by 10 millimeter screws. Again, not too tight so that it can still pivot. Check that everything moves properly and that the suspension is working well. And then you can finish off the skid by adding two more 10 by 15 by four millimeter bearings onto the rear suspension mount, which will allow the track to roll over the mount smoothly. Okay, next we're gonna build the frame and we're gonna start by connecting the main frame section with the tunnel front. For this, we're gonna use four three by 10 millimeter screws with washers on them. The easiest way to do this is to preset all four screws in the tunnel piece and then sandwich the two pieces together with your fingers and turn the screws the rest of the way through as you see here. Once complete, you can then optionally throw on a couple of M3 nuts on the other side. 
I find the top two easy to put on, but the lower two are a pain. So I just do the top two here and I'm confident that will hold more than good enough. Next, we're going to attach the front and rear sections of the tunnel. You can do this with short screws or a little CA glue. I've opted to use both here. Make sure the screws that go through the top of the tunnel go from underneath and are button head screws to make sure they won't bust off any track pedals if you bottom out the suspension. You can see here that I've actually put the screws on the sides of the tunnel going from the inside to the outside as well, but I'll have to change those later when I install the foot rails from the outside, so those ones don't need to be installed like I've done them here. Next we're going to install the rear tail lights. Unpackage them and then thread the two smaller 3mm lights through the hole in the rear of the tunnel and stuff them into the tail light holder. If they don't stay, you can add a little bit of hot glue to hold them in their sockets like I've done. Once the glue has cooled, you can put the rear holder in place and flip the frame over and then insert two small 4mm screws in through the underside of the tunnel to hold the rear light holder in place. These screws are really short, so if the light holder ever comes loose, which it might, I'd recommend just using a bit of CA glue to secure it for good. Now we're going to run the light wires along the inside of the tunnel and secure them in place in a few locations with a little more of that hot glue. Make sure to hold the wires in place until the glue solidifies enough that it won't move. Run the wires through the hole in the tunnel to the top side of the sled. And add a few more dabs of hot glue. Now flip the sled over and tape those lights down with some masking tape so they don't get in the way as we won't need them till the end of the project and that completes the frame. Next we're going to build the front suspension with all the pieces you see here. The first thing we're going to do is preset the screws for the rear side of the A-arm connections because they are secured with a hex driver through the front side of the A-arm connection. Use M3 by 16mm screws. Now insert the upper A-arm in its place and secure it with M3 by 16mm screws. The curved portion of the arm should go towards the back of the sled. Make sure the screws aren't too tight so the arms can rotate. Now insert the lower A-arm in its place and secure it the same way. The shock mount should face upwards and as far as I can tell the lower arms are interchangeable. Now we can attach the front shocks with two M3 by 16 millimeter screws. Please note that it's actually easier here to attach the top mount first and then the lower shock mount as you'll see me do on the other side. Now we're going to attach our steering knuckles and for these we're using M3 by 16 millimeter countersunk screws. So the knuckles can pivot and rotate easily like makeshift ball joints. These don't get tightened at all and are secured only as far as they can allow everything to move freely. You want to secure the knuckle to the lower A arms first as your driver may need to run through the upper hole. To secure the upper A arm, it helps to compress the shock a little bit. You can tell the right knuckle from the left one because there's a flange for the connection for the steering rods, which faces towards the back of the snowmobile. Now we can do the other side. Now it's time to attach the skis. We attach the ski to the bottom of each knuckle with an M3 by 20 millimeter screw, again leaving it loose enough that the ski can pivot. Then we attach the ski hooks with the curved section oriented more towards the front of the skis, and they get an M3 by 16 millimeter screw at the front connection, and then an M3 by 20 millimeter screw at the more rearward connection. Then do the other side. 
Now we're going to work on the steering, and for this we need a standard size servo. This servo is getting installed upside down, and most servos come with an extra flange on the attachment arms for added strength, but these will get in the way when we install it upside down, so we need to first trim those off as shown before it can be installed. Next we're going to attach our servo arm down the body of the servo as shown. I'm using a metal arm here, but you could use a plastic one as well. My arm is installed with one screw on the top and two cinching screws on the side. Make sure your servo is centered before you install your arm so your steering is straight. I've already done this off screen by attaching it to a powered up radio receiver. Now take a screw and thread it into the servo arm and then into the printed servo coupler a few millimeters until it's snug. If you're using a thin plastic servo arm, you'll only need about an 8mm screw, but I needed about a 10mm one for this thicker metal servo arm. Then put the servo in place with the arm pointing towards the back of the machine and screw it into place with 4 and 3 by 10mm screws. Now, this part is a little tricky so have some patience, but flip your sled over and grab the two steering rods and try to set them in place so the holes in the ends line up with the hole in the steering coupler and then thread through a three by eight millimeter screw. Don't snug it too tight as the rods will need to rotate a bit. Once the rods are connected to the steering coupler, you can flip the sled over and then connect the steering rods to the top of the steering knuckles with two M3 by eight millimeter screws. Your skis should now move in unison with the servo arm. Okay, let's move on and work on the transmission next. The first thing we're going to do is attach the spur gear we purchased for the sled to the herringbone gear we 3D printed with three M3 by four millimeter screws. Next, we take our front gear axle and slide the side without the bulge in through the center of the purchase gear and out the other side of the printed gear till it kind of clicks into place a little bit. Then we can take three of the 10 by 15 by four millimeter bearings and press them into the transmission base and cover plates. Then press the purchase gear side of the gear axle into the base plate while making sure the bearings stay in place. And then put the cover plate on top and rotate it until the holes in the base plate line up with the holes in the cover plate. Sandwich these two plates together hard and then drive two 3 by 30 millimeter screws through the left side of the cover plate and then through the base plate until they're just past flush. So not all the way through, but they're holding the plates together and then add an M3 by 12 millimeter screw through the base plate first and into the cover plate in the remaining hole nearest the top of the case. Next, grab your sprocket axle and slide onto it the other herringbone gear with the flange facing inwards on the side of the axle that has the hole closest to the edge. Secure it in place for now with an M3 by 14 millimeter screw. Then grab two more 10 by 15 by four millimeter bearings and press them into their holes on the inside of the front tunnel. If the bearings are at all loose in their sockets, you can secure them in place with a very small amount of hot glue onto the tunnel plastic, just overlapping the outside of the bearing. That should keep them in place, but mine were nice and tight, so I left them as is for now. Then slide your axle through the tunnel and thread on both of the front sprockets as you push the axle through, making sure the extended flange on each socket faces inwards. Make sure each sprocket lines up with a hole in the axle and then secure it in place with an M3 by 14 millimeter screw. Now we're going to attach the transmission, but to get the herringbone gears to mesh well, we need to back off the screw on the herringbone gear we just installed so it can slide along the axle. Then we're going to mesh the gears and re-secure it into place. Then we can install the transmission by driving the longer 3 by 30 millimeter screws all the way through the base plates and into the frame, and then add one last M3 by 8 millimeter screw through the last hole on the inside of the tunnel and through into the base plate. Okay, now that the transmission is complete, we can attach the skid to the frame with four M3 by 14 millimeter screws. Where the front attaches, there are flat spots on the arms and on the frame to make sure everything is aligned properly. Now is a good time to lube your gears as well with some super lube or another PTFE based lube. Lubing your gears will make them last far longer. I forgot to do it at this point, so I'll have to do it later. 
Next we're going to build our track, and this is where your build might differ from mine a little bit, as I've gone with a TPU track here which is quite flexible and connects together a bit differently than the PLA one. So far I'm really liking the TPU track, and I think it's going to be a more durable solution than the PLA one. I'll leave a link in the description to a video on building the PLA track if you prefer. We're going to be using some filament for our pins here today to connect the track pieces together, and the first thing you need to do is determine the length of the pins that you need in order to put the track together. You do this by inserting some filament into one piece of track, figuring out how long it extends into each end stop piece, and then cutting a template of an appropriate length. Then, once I've cut my template, I like to mark the piece with a sharpie so I remember which one it is, and then I can cut a second piece and make sure that one works nicely before going ahead and cutting all the pieces for the track. To connect the pieces of track together, place a single paddle and a double paddle piece of track beside each other and then thread through the pin all the way into the hinge until it bottoms out on the other side and just the tip sticks out where you started and then bend over the other end stop piece so the pin can't come out. Once you've confirmed your pins are the perfect length, you can go ahead and make sure you've cut a grand total of 38 pins for your 38 track pieces or even make a few extra just in case. After cutting all your pins, you can resume building your track piece by piece with a double paddle piece and then a single paddle piece, and so on and so forth. Again, to connect the pieces of track together, place a single paddle and a double paddle piece of track beside each other, and then work the pin all the way through the hinge except for the end stop piece until it completely bottoms out on the other side and just the tip of the pin sticks out where you started. Then you can manually stretch over the other end stop piece so the pin can't come out. A few tips, sometimes it helps to use something hard to make sure you push the pin in all the way completely. Also sometimes it helps to bend your pin straight a bit before you attempt to push them in. Once complete, you can install the track by flipping the sled over and threading the track over the sprockets and around the rear rollers. The track is directional and when installed properly, the paddles on the track pieces on the bottom of the skid should be oriented so they are angled slightly towards the front of the sled. Use a remaining pin and a little extra force to connect the track together. Test to make sure it rotates freely, and then you can tension the track a bit by tightening the tensioning screws at the rear of the skid, which push the rear rollers into place. Okay, now we're ready to install the motor and electronics and test this baby out. For this build, I'm using a Surpass Hobby Rocket V3 13.5T 540 brushless sensored motor and a Hobbywing 10BL120 brushless sensored ESC. I have a few different pinions here I could go with, but I'm going to start with a 13 to 32p pinion and see if that works well. I may need to change my pinion later when testing the sled on snow if I want to have more or less higher low end track speed. To install the motor you would normally just need two M3 by 10 millimeter screws and washers. But in test fitting here I found that my motor and pinion stick out too far into the transmission case and don't mesh well with my purchased 32p spur gear. So instead I'm using longer M3 screws and a bunch of M3 washers as spacers to kind of move my motor away from the transmission a little bit. Ideally I'd 3D print a motor shim for this instead but I can do that later and this should work for now. Don't tighten your motor down at first until you get your pinion secured in place with its set screw, and then press the pinion and spur together slightly once you're ready to tighten the motor into place. Okay, now we're going to solder up the ESC. 
it's going to reside at the back of the motor and the cable should reach nicely as you can see. On the black and red wires, I'm going to solder a Dean's plug for my batteries. Now I'm checking the instructions with my ESC to make sure I wire the motor properly. Once I'm confident in the wire locations, blue A, yellow B, orange C, then I go ahead and put a blob of solder on each connection cup. Then I take the wires one by one and press solder them into their appropriate space. Now grab a battery and your radio combo and plug your servo, ESC, and lights into your receiver. I'm using FlySky, so steering in channel 1, throttle in channel 2, and lights in 3. Then plug in a battery, turn on your transmitter, and you can power on your ESC. Your light should come on immediately, and then you can test out the steering and drive. It might take a moment for the track to run smoothly, as your track likely didn't print perfectly and needs to kind of work itself in. Okay, now we're finally ready to put some finishing touches on this bad boy. Again, I'm using the polar body fairings here, so your install will be a little different if you're installing the original ski ride body panels. I start by sliding the piece called polar body back into place and securing it with two M3 by 12 millimeter screws. Then we can attach the polar body front with one M3 by 12 millimeter screw from underneath. Then we can attach those two pieces together with two longer M3 screws, about 20 millimeters in length. Then we can slide the seat base into place and attach it with the printed seat connectors and four M3 by eight millimeter screws on each side. Then you can slide your lights through the seat base into the front area and reconnect them to the ESC and install a battery. Normally I'd use a larger 3S LiPo battery for this model, but for testing right now, I'm just using a small 2S one. Push your lights into the spaces in the front hood. Once in place, mine held really well, so I didn't need any hot glue this time, but your mileage may vary. Test fit your windshield and then secure it with a little bit of glue. I like to use E6000 glue or shoe goo or something similar for these kinds of jobs, and then press fit your windshield back into place. Test it out to see how cool it looks, especially when printed in clear PETG. Now we're going to add the hood magnets that will help hold the hood in place. I didn't have the exact right size magnets for this, so I opted to use similar ones and then heat fit them into place, which I don't really recommend. Just buy the right magnets. Then attach your motor sensor wire to your motor and ESC if you have a censored motor and you haven't done that already.
Then you can attach your seat by sliding it into place until it clicks in right over top of the battery. Next we can install the foot rails. To do this we need to remove the two screws holding the sides of the tunnel together, as well as the two screws holding the rear skid assembly to the tunnel. Then you can put the foot rail in place and replace the screws that connect through to the rear assembly. Then you can screw the rest of the foot rail holds in place with M3 by 12 mm screws for these thicker polar foot rails. Don't forget the two hidden screws near the back of the foot rail. Next, if you want to install the snow flap, you should do it now by sliding into the groove in the rear light mount. But I'm going to skip that for this project and just go straight to the bumper. I believe the bumper mounts are to be attached with just one M3 by 8mm screw on each side, but that doesn't really hold them securely enough. So I ended up adding a little CA or super glue to each side to hold them in place. Then you can tape those in position while they dry and install the rear bumper with two more M3 by 8mm screws. The bumper will also not be super secure with just those two screws, so you can glue this as well if you'd like. Then we can set our tunnel bag in place and mark approximately where the middle will go, and then make sure that mark is exactly centered on the tunnel with a ruler or a set of calipers. Then we can drill a hole with a drill bit just less than three millimeters wide on our mark through the tunnel. Now, this is a little tricky, but you have to secure the bag to the tunnel with one M3 by 10 millimeter screw from the underside. To get yourself a bit of extra room, you can temporarily detach the tunnel from the skid as shown, and then use a small Allen key to work the screw into place. Once the screw starts to poke through the top of the tunnel, grab the tunnel bag, Add a bit of super glue to the underside to hold it in position, and then continue to screw it in place. Then you can reattach your skid. Now you can pop on your hood properly and add your handlebars which should pop into their slot quite easily since you printed them in a flexible TPU as well. Okay, so here's what the inside looks like before any organization. And now here you can see we've organized things a bit. The ESC on off switch and receiver are all well secured in their spots using a little double sided foam tape and the wires are mostly bound together with a zip tie. Pretty simple. And here we are with one final test to make sure everything's working as it should. Just look how pretty she is. Okay, so thank you very much for watching the build guide of this 3D printed RC snowmobile, the ski ride with the polar body panels and the TPU track and the HD mod steering knuckle. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. And if you're looking for a build kit for a snowmobile like this, check us out at rcprinter.com.